imagine. You're looking at the ocean from above. There's a 2D grid. In the grid, there can either be water, represented by zero, or land, represented by one. Islands can be made up of land tiles, connected to the island, or vertical, but not diagonal. Given a 2D array of ones and zeros, write a function to return the number of islands. Number of islands, aka lead code number 200 or LC200, is a deceptively simple sounding, medium difficulty tech interview question, with lots of potential pitfalls hidden just beneath the surface. LC200 has been frequently used to interview candidates at Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and more. Whether you believe whiteboard style interviews are right or wrong, they are the reality at most tech companies today, big or small. In this video, we'll visualize both the problem description and an effective solution in TypeScript as well as discuss some of the numerous pitfalls that can come up during your interview so that you can best prepare. Let's get started. Let's have a grid so the top left row column is zero, zero, like so. A helpful strategy is to handle the edge cases or boundary conditions so you don't forget about them later. For example, what happens if you receive a null or empty input? Oh, we should probably just return zero islands, great. What about initial conditions? We have an islands counter, that should start at zero. That's pretty much it, great. Okay, so we're going to have to loop over this 2D array. What if it is non-empty and we land on a zero? Do we really care? We don't need to track zeros or count them at all, so we can pretty much skip them and do nothing, move on to the next square. So if we have a grid full of zeros, we can just loop over it, return our initial islands counter, call it a day. Great. Now onto the important bits. What happens if we land on a one? So how do we know if this tile of land is part of a larger island? After we mark this square as visited, let's say by setting the value from one to zero, we just pick a direction, let's say right, and check its neighbor tile to see if it is also land. If it is, they're part of the same island. Then for that neighbor, after we mark it as visited, we can continue right until we reach an end condition, like water or the edge of the grid. After hitting the end condition, we can backtrack one step check the next direction down, and if land, we go right again to the end. Backtrack, backtrack, and do this over and over until we visit every connected tile of land in the current island from your starting position. Then it is a matter of looping over the entire grid, skipping the visited tiles or water, and counting the times we find isolated, unvisited land tiles. This approach is called depth first search, or DFS. We're going as deep as we can before backtracking and moving on. DFS is a graph traversal algorithm, which makes this a problem a graph traversal problem. Code-wise, DFS is short and easy to write and therefore remember. If this is your first time encountering this type of problem, please take a moment to try your hand at analyzing the time and space complexity of this solution and writing the code for this from the pseudocode. It helps check if you understand the solution as well as you think you do, makes for excellent practice, and will help you remember via engagement and action. If you'd like to do that, please pause now. I'll wait. Okay, so by now you've given it a try, or not, and you're ready to see someone else's solution. You're looping through the entire grid, which will be of size rows times columns. This time complexity will therefore be O, M times N, where M is rows, N is columns, whatever you want. In practice, however, the algorithm may repeat squares one additional time, like checking a tile DFS already visited, which in the worst case makes it O, two times N times N, which is still O of M times N. For space complexity, this is a recursive algorithm with no additional data structures, so the space is determined mostly by how many recursive stack calls are made. If the entire grid is all land, after that first tile, it just keep calling DFS for every other tile and increase the stack until it hits O, M times N space. So worst case scenario, it is O, M times N space complexity. If the entire grid is water, it will never run DFS, so the best case scenario is O, one space. For the code, as mentioned, I like to start with the base case. So if there's no grid, it's empty, it's null, return zero. Next, I'll do the loop. But to do that, we need to first define the data structures. In JavaScript and TypeScript, 2D arrays are typically implemented as nested arrays, hence the type definition. The inputs from the lead code website are received as an array of rows. So the first array is actually the column, aka the y-axis, which may be a little confusing. So if you receive this question in a real interview, double check with your interviewers to avoid confusion while communicating. Now we can actually add in a little loop. Since we only care about the one case, we need an if condition. In that condition, we run the DFS and increment the counter to 
be fair, you could do either of these two lines in any order. Okay, under first, DFS, doesn't matter. And then now we'll implement the DFS. What about the base case? If the visited tile is zero, return. Otherwise, set it to zero because we visited it. Check, it's not absolutely necessary since we're already calling it with the, the tile value being one, but just to be safe. So now we want to go, let's go right first. So if the row is less than grid length minus one, we haven't hit the edge to the right yet. And we can just call islands DFS again, increment row, leave column the same. Let's go down. If a column is less than grid row, minus one, we want to do row, and then we want to go increment the column by one, because that's going down. Let's go left. So if row row is greater than zero and grid of length and we're going up if column is greater than zero. And that should be it. Let's test it out. Success. Okay, that was easy. Except some pitfalls you might encounter in the real world. Solutions to these pitfalls are left as an exercise for you to think about. But if you leave a comment about which you'd like to see visualized. Pitfall number one, the downsides of recursion. As of 2022, most modern JavaScript runtimes do not fully support tail call optimization. This means that every recursive call you add will keep stacking memory and using up your finite resources. Most modern browsers will limit this to about 100,000 calls and throw errors if you exceed it. So if your grid size will exceed the limit for your runtime and platform, you may want to consider using an iterative approach instead. Pitfall number two, only knowing one approach. Recognizing that this problem is a graph traversal problem, which can be solved with DFS, is an important skill to practice. But DFS is not the only way to solve this problem, and interviewers may also want to test whether you know how to go about the other approaches. So it helps to be prepared to handle converting recursive to iterative and vice versa. Another approach to the problem is with breadth first search, or BFS. Instead of going right all the way to the end and so on, you go one step in each direction before going to the neighbor and repeating. Pitfall three. Mutability. In my solution, I modified the original grid input. Your interviewer may require you to keep the original input intact. How would you go about modifying the code to support this? Give it a try. With a good grasp of how to go about solving a number of islands, you should be able to adapt to any graph traversal problem without having to memorize every lead code problem and solution ever made. That's it for this video. If you'd like to see more visualizations, please put a topic or problem request in the comments. Like and subscribe. Otherwise, good luck with your interview.